Hi everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Uh, it's another day, which obviously means there's going to be another graphics card release. Apparently we're not allowed to go very long between these. This time it's from NVIDIA, not AMD. AMD has been on this cycle of releasing new graphics cards recently. Now we're on the NVIDIA side with this guy. This is the GeForce GTX 780 Ti, or Ti, depending on how you want to pronounce that moniker. Um, this is a new flagship graphics card from NVIDIA. $699 price tag, and it, so that's more than the GTX 780, less than the Titan. Uh, but the Titan is kind of, as you'll see in our benchmarks, kind of kind of out of the equation for gamers at this point. So uh, let's talk about what makes the GTX 780 Ti unique. First of all, if we look at just the diagram of what is inside of it, you'll see that we're looking at a full GK110 GPU. So the GK110 GPU was first released with the Titan, but it actually had one of these SMX units disabled. So you were only running at 2,600... 88 cores, I believe. Uh, with, with 780 Ti, it's actually the full GPU, so you're getting all 15 SMX units for 2,880 CUDA cores. Um, so you're, the highest CUDA core count on any single GPU we've seen today is with this card. Um, if we look at just specifications wise, you know, I won't go through everything on this particular table, but uh, the base clock is higher on this card than it is on the Titan or the GTX 780. Uh, the memory clock is higher. We're now running at 7 gigabits per second instead of 6 gigabits per second. Uh, this does have 3 gigs of frame buffer, so it matches the 780 uh, and is half of the Titan still, and it's a 384-bit uh, memory bus. Everything else is really the same uh, in terms of clock speeds and L2 cache size and any of those specifications. But you are getting more CUDA cores, more texture units, the same number of ROP units, and uh, higher base and boost clocks for this card. Now, what's it look like? It looks pretty much like the other GTX 700 cards you've seen. This is a picture of the GTX 780 Ti. The difference really is they've kind of made the logo text a little bit darker, uh, which is nice, but it's essentially the same cooler that we've seen uh, since uh, the GTX 690 was a little bit different, but then we had the uh, Titan, the 780, the 770, and several cards use this style of design. It's a very, I think, a very attractive looking cooler design uh, for a reference build, and it turns out to be pretty efficient and quiet at the same time. Now what they did keep the same also is the input, or I'm sorry, the output configuration for displays. You're still getting two dual-link DVI outputs, a full-size HDMI, and a full-size DisplayPort. Uh, AMD has adopted this with the R9 series of graphics cards, which we definitely like. So what do you get for $700 in terms of performance, right? So it's, it's direct competition is going to be the new AMD R9 290X, which is a $550 graphics card if you can find it in stock anywhere. And uh, we'll also pit it against the GTX 780, which is selling for $499 now, and the GTX Titan, which is $999. So um, if we go ahead and look at benchmark results, we'll start with the Battlefield 3. It's a classic. Yes, I know Battlefield 4 is out. We're updating here very soon, but performance is all relative here. Uh, the black line here is actually the 780Ti. Orange line is 780. Pink line is the Titan, and the green line, maybe an unfortunate color selection, is the R9 290X. You can see here in our, in our benchmark, clearly the 780 Ti is the faster of these cards. Here's our frame times graph. It's definitely the best performing there. And if you look at this, again, if you look kind of at our 50th percentile, this is more or less pretty much exactly your average frame rate. You can see here we're in the 81 range for the 780 Ti and right above 70 for the other competing cards. So it definitely has a performance advantage. Uh, in Battlefield 3 at 4K, that advantage is still, still there, right? We're talking about almost 40 frames per second for the 780 Ti, and probably 33, 34 frames per second for the 290X. Metro last slide at 4K, we see similar types of advantages for the 780 Ti. Um, maybe a little bit less than playable frame rates here, but you're probably talking at 28, 29 versus 24 frames per second. And clearly, 780 Ti is faster than the GTX 780. Power consumption is another question everybody is going to have, and this was kind of one of the concerns we had over the new AMD 290X, but if you look at this graph, the 780 Ti is actually pulling almost as much power as the 290X. Uh, pretty close in that regard, and it's pulling 50 watts more than the GTX 780. So it seems clear to me at this point that NVIDIA was willing to sacrifice its advantage in power consumption 
Uh, and as we see on this next graph, its advantage in sound levels in order to make sure that it outperformed the R9290X by a fairly reasonable margin. If you look at the sound levels of the card, it's still um, a couple of decibels lower than the R9290X, but it's also, again, significantly higher than either the GTX 780 or the GTX Titan. So uh, it's possible that AMD's kind of aggressiveness with temperatures, with sound levels, with power consumption kind of forced NVIDIA's hand a little bit to say, oh, well, we need to compete. We need to make sure we have a card that's better than that. So we'll stretch our standards that we had before with the 780 and the Titan uh, to make sure we, we take back this performance lead. But in temperature, the specific temperature changes that NVIDIA made are fairly slim. Uh, they're, they're basically letting the 780 Ti get three or four Celsius, to, uh, three or four degrees Celsius higher than uh, the previous GK110 base parts. So uh, obviously the R9290X is still, still much, much higher. So what's that kind of leave everything, right? So if you go to our full article at PCPer.com, we have a lot more benchmarks. Not all of them uh, show the 780 Ti as being that much faster than the R9290X. If you look at Bioshock Infinite, for example, or um, the Grid 2, you'll find that these games tend to be a little bit more equal in performance. I would say the 780 Ti is definitely faster at 2560 by 1440 and... Uh, 4K resolutions, 3840 by 2160, though that can range from 5% to 20% depending on the particular game. I think it's safe to say that this card is 10 to 15% faster than the 290X uh, in our testing. We did look at Crossfire, we did look at SLI, so the 780 SLI, or 780 Ti and SLI does scale very well. The same issues or concerns that you might have had with R9 290X since its release last month are still there. It's better. Uh, it's staying much more competitive if you're looking down the multi-GPU avenue to have that path with these kind of expensive cards. So it's something to consider. Make sure you look through all those benchmarks and results. Uh, I would say at $699, the GTX 780 Ti is a uh, very compelling card for those kind of ultra enthusiasts. It really will come down to, do you believe that the price difference now of $150 between the R9 290X and the GTX 780 Ti is worth the performance deltas you're seeing? Uh, I would tend to say, if you're looking to spend that kind of money, this is actually a good option over the 290X. Um, there are still a lot of people that are going to say, well, I could do a whole lot with $150, buy games, invest in a, a higher capacity solid state drive or save up for that second card a little bit quicker. And those are all absolutely true scenarios and I wouldn't criticize you for doing that. Um, it's a really interesting part because I feel like this is very reactionary from NVIDIA. They don't like not having the flagship card anymore. And it's also interesting in that it completely undercuts the GTX Titan. No gamer should be looking to buy a GTX Titan anymore. Even though it has six gigs of memory and this has three gigs of memory, uh, this card has much higher core counts or has higher core counts and higher clock speeds and it's you know three hundred dollars less expensive this is definitely a better card than the titan is and uh, the move up from the 780 to this is pretty significant you're going from 500 to 700 dollars here but you are getting 25 percent more compute uh, units and a lot more memory bandwidth and that kind of stuff too so uh 780 ties in an interesting position at $699, uh, so I, it's, it's hard to give it a, a full recommendation just because of some of the, you know, the noise went up and the power went up, and that was kind of one of the areas where we were really depending on NVIDIA to hold steady, uh, but it's a, it is the best performance single GPU we can find. So uh, make sure you get all the uh, other benchmarks and details and pricing and links for all that uh, in our full review over at PCPer.com. Thanks for watching, guys.